Beats. <laughs> Waking up with that hey, energy. Let's go, baby. Shout out to Blazard Music. He does art, NFTs, all sorts of stuff. What's going on, everybody? <laughs> we out here, baby. <laughs> Episode uh. 1313 wow. Jelly Bean. Seeing you on the TV screen. You hey. know what's interesting about that, Steven? Today <laughs> is the 13th. Oh, man. Wait, is it? Yeah, it is. I knew that. I totally knew that it was the 13th. Hey, 1313, let's go. It really feels like we've been out here for longer. Not in a bad way, though, but I feel like we've just, I don't know. This feels like we're deep in it now, man. We're deep are you, in it. Are you referring to just uh, the market, the world? Like, what What do you? What are we deep into? Just how many episodes we've done, Oh, dude. okay, okay, it, okay. It, it really doesn't feel like 13. It feels like 20, but not not in a bad way, you know? I'm not, it's it's funny you say that because I do look back on like I rewatch older episodes like not from beginning to end. I don't love watching to ourselves speak that much, um, but I, I go back and I, I literally just like it's it's fun to go back and see us months ago and some of the episodes I'm I'm literally like oh I remember this conversation like that wasn't like I know, I know the like community likes it but sometimes I'm like yeah that was good that was bad like it's fun to go back in time. Yeah, it's crazy that we've come this far. We're sitting around, what, 930 subscribers, and we started with a measly zero at the beginning. So great appreciation to the community out there, and man, just happy to be here. Yeah, for sure. That's a great way to start off the episode, uh, because, you know, we are community members, you and I, Alec, and... uh, you know, community is just like such a loose term, and I feel like you're you're in it if like you're adding and contributing and like being cool. But I don't know what do you what do you have to say about I don't know? Can you be a community member and you know talk shit for sure? Like where's the line drawn? Like when you're not an Elrond like community or like bullish like Elrond believer like because you know what I mean? I I I think uh, I think as long as you're giving uh you know constructive or trying to help the community i think you're a community member i think yeah. uh everyone is entitled to their you know negative opinions um mm-hmm. uh, but uh, it's just <laughs> it's just kind of hard to be a permeable like you steven I, I just gotta put that out there dude yeah i don't it's 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 fun to see people still on like the Elrond energy, like, you know, I guess we'll just keep that going throughout the episode. Another shout out, fun song there, Elrond energy, baby. Um, but yeah, like it's, I don't know, I was thinking about that in, in preparing for today's episode. Like part of the reason I think that I am a perma bull is like because i've already dug in fucking deep like forget about when i bought how much i bought how much like anything like it's just like i realized how risky and like how 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 much of a baby kind of cryptocurrency is Um, i think a lot of that had to do with just i was immersed at school with other people talking about financial stuff and just the tone and, and the way that it seemed the world interacts with crypto and like the bitcoin conversation like very quickly i saw how much people like hate the idea of like bitcoin cryptocurrency decentralization how much they're like against like the the next thing like the big next tech thing and i was just like holy shit like there's so many people opposed to this but it's literally objectively like such powerful technology so i don't know like it's just like i understood how much people like like rejected it so i was like all right like i'm just gonna bask in this in this jacuzzi i think it's one of those moments in time that you know 20 50 years from now you can look back and be like how stupid it was for all this rejection just like tv just like the internet yeah you know there were every time there was like something new and revolutionary that enhanced the human experience or changed the human experience it's always found you know it's always been met with great resistance i mean Mm -hmm. people said tv wasn't gonna last TV, Steven, the thing that people watch, like almost most people watch every single day in the fucking internet, for God's (laughs) sakes, being one of them. Oh, my God. Yeah. Shout out Childish Gambino because the internet. But yeah, dude, like because of the internet, it is crazy what has happened just beyond different ways that people have, you know, built on the internet, found ways for people to make money through it. 
Like um, that reminded me yesterday I saw, I, I think it was on Twitter, so do your own research. But like apparently BMW is now making their seat warmers a premium subscription that you have to pay either a, a monthly or like yearly subscription. Like that, I'm not sure if it's all BMWs, but I read what? that out there today or yesterday. What the fuck? That makes no sense, Steven. Yeah, man. I mean, it, it, but uh, it's... It, it does remind me of essentially like what Tesla does. Like Teslas are more heavily dependent on the computers and AI within it. So they have much more tiers of what the AI does. You know, you have your baseline car just does a few things. But when I worked for them, there was a $10,000 feature that was full self-driving. You buy it once, you get it for the rest of the car's lifetime. So there's just like this idea that certain softwares, you know, they'll ask you for more money but then then like bmw is getting into it and uh because the internet bmw is able to tell you pay this amount of money or we'll we'll just shut off your seat warmers <laughs> you know i've never really cared that much about seat warmers right now i'm driving a piece of shit 07 toyota corolla and there oh, are what? no seat warmers <laughs> we gotta yeah, talk afterwards because that's yeah, news that's, to me yeah. <laughs> Alrighty. Uh, well, throwing it into uh, who knows what I mean. Let let's hear from you because you know I, I title myself this permable, so you can probably guess that I have certain opinions. Uh, but last time you and I spoke, Alec, you know we obviously were there together from the beginning to end. You were, you know, you had your opinions, and not to say that I changed them, but the conversation, I felt it did kind of grease your gears a little bit, and by the end, you were literally riding the bull, you know, seeming to have fun. So what's what's going on over on your end, bro? Always having fun over here, but I'm going to go ahead, stick in my bear camp. No! <laughs> yes, yes, yes. It just feels like the right place to be. And, uh, yeah, you, I, you and the herd, you and the entire well, herd. Well, it's because we're just looking at the bigger signs, bro. I, did you see the CPI numbers come out this month? Literally today, I believe. Yeah, why are you saying that as if that's a bear case? Like, that's more case for Bitcoin being an inflation hedge. Steven, yes. it, hasn't wor- it has not worked as an inflation hedge. Nobody is saying that it's working right now, but it's it's the long term view. It's all it's um, as as soon as you can enter the market, start collecting your own data regarding to when you bought, what price you got. Then at that point is when you should kind of start your own comparison. Are you personally beating inflation? Yeah, but people were calling for Bitcoin to be a, a, a inflation hedge all the way back at 60 K. So well, I think dude, it, the market clearly was not ready. I, I say that in hindsight, if we were still like poking around the 60 Ks, I mean, the entire sentiment would be different. Like the market just showed us that it needed to cool off. I, I think what, why I continue to believe that is because of one simple fact that just hasn't changed yet. Yeah. We have not decoupled. Yeah, it Elrond specifically, happened. Bitcoin or crypto. Oh, oh sorry, sorry. So you're just speaking yeah. high, like high level traditional, maybe versus just Bitcoin or crypto. Yeah, we we have not decoupled gotcha. from the market. CPI, the Consumer Price Index, what nine point six percent, I believe, was released today. So I think it's one of the worst it's been in a very, 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 very long time. Yeah. So I just see the the mm-hmm. omens on the horizon, and I don't think. I just don't think crypto is ready yet to be that inflation hedge. I hear you. I hear you. And what can I say? I have no proof at this time that can convince anybody otherwise. I mean, I would be a fool to argue that that isn't the case right now. But, you know, that uh, I can't say but. I always feel like but is basically just like cross out what I just said. This is what I really mean. Uh, but, you know, you say but all the time. But, but, but. <laughs> but yeah, dude, it's just like we're like the first time we were at this level, this $20,000 level for Bitcoin was 2017, which was just like the most that was like the bubble that really kind of like roped me in and a lot of other people for the first time heard bitcoin and learned about crypto and it was at that time that the market obviously retraced for all this time and here we are all these years later at 20k and it's just it's so frustrating i will say because i i 
because I wrote a losing position for so long, like literally my brain is just wired to just not give a fuck. Like literally it's just like, it's, it's going to pay off and then it did. And it's like, now we're just retracing. Um, so I guess the emphasis is that it's frustrating. Like I'm hitting myself, I guess, because they always say like, Oh, buy, not buy high, sell high, you know, take profits. But like, I am such a, 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 what, what pawn, I guess, to just like euphoria, like, you know, the market went to like $70,000, 69K exactly. And all of like the, like classic rules, charting rules say that, you know, anytime a point of resistance breaks to the upside, that area becomes support. So 20K was hit. It went through years of correction and moving all through COVID and stuff, eventually broke through 20K. So there's like every reason, every like by definition reason for the price to revisit 20K. But I just like was in such disbelief because of my euphoria. It was just like, no, like this time is different. You know, like I just say it like the whole way through. But what can I say? I'm, I'm humbled by the market. It, it continues to, uh, to correct me, correct all of us. I, I gotta ask, dude. Um, so you say twenty k was was that support for Bitcoin? What do you see as maybe a possible support price for Eagle? I'm not trying to like yeah. give anyone like advice on buy at this level, but like, what do you think might be that that uh, that support? Yeah. So before I move to Elrond, just to specify, I'm not claiming that twenty k is support. Support can only be support in hindsight. So literally right now at this level, like that's the big question is like, is this support? Are we building support? And in order for that to kind of begin to have confirmation, there needs to be a few series of prices moving up and out of probably like the $22,000 level, moving up towards 30,000, not to 30,000, but moving um, towards back 30,000, making some good move, and then coming back down and retesting support again, higher than it is now. So really, it's just like this idea of two steps forward, one step back. The step backwards should essentially be resting on the bed that was laid in the previous support testing. So it's really just kind of two steps forward, like more so like five steps forward, three steps back type of feel. Um, but it's just like this cadence and the market has been through such bloody capitulation that, I mean, I was calling the bottom much higher and much more often, as you know, but like literally like I will be right eventually. Like if it's 20,000, so be it. If it's 10,000, I'm going to be saying the same thing. If we go all the way back down to like 3K, like I'm going to literally be like, well, fuck me. But like now is more reason than ever for Bitcoin to fucking moon, you know? <laughs> Just... Just word of caution to all those people out there who are trying mm -hmm. to get get rich quick off crypto. Don't try to catch the knife. Literally, wait for wait for every single sign to show you that we're at a bottom. Like, yeah, if, if you I haven't just, been collecting, yeah. If if you're new to this, do not be a fucking idiot. Don't put yourself in jeopardy. You know, just yeah. maybe sit on the sidelines for this one. Yeah, I mean, I I literally do just forget. I mean, I guess. I'm under perhaps a false impression that people watching the show know that I'm a perma bull and they see the way I talk and they don't see it as this scientist behind the screen saying this is, I mean, because that's like an issue that I have is like, I, I do technical analysis, but like, I, I'm not really like a technical, I mean, analyst, like, which is where the economistic word came from was because I, I don't want to give myself a title that I don't feel that I am. And I, because like I, what I expect from a technical analyst is somebody who is bringing out different formulas, is bringing out these different measurements based on Fibonacci and so forth. But I don't, I just don't do any of that. The reason is because I just like lay my hands open that I can't predict what's going to happen. So I don't know, like I fall in this weird category where I know technical an uh, analysts, I know <laughs> technical analyses. analysis, technical analysis, but I just like, yeah, I, I'm just like preaching permeable like all the time. So yeah. I, I, and I read your your latest tweet about uh, you know saying I'm a permeable and all that stuff, uh, saying that you are permeable. But I think you also put out good caution. 
yeah. out there, letting Thanks. people know that that the bottom it can go lower. And I, I even saw you reiterate that. So I think that is an important piece that people need to to recognize as well. Mm-hmm. Yes, you're permeable, but that's that's your status. And I hope people are able. To, yeah, like you said, I hope people are able to understand it. And there's nothing wrong with being that way at all, man. I think it's I think it's fun for you to be on the this opposite side of the coin that. Honestly, it's starting to seem like the minor- minority right now, Stephen. Mm-hmm. But I, I think it's cool that you stick to the guns there, man. And and yeah, you're right, man. You are going to be right one day. It's just who knows what kind of blood is up ahead because I smell fire in the distance, but maybe I'm a crazy person. Mm, which is ironic because there are forest fires threatening to destroy Yosemite National Park. That so. is upsetting. Uh, you know, it's it's just the um, the, the news. Um, back back on topic. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> other than the world burning, literally, ah, um, <laughs> the skies aren't aren't smoky yet, so that's always positive. Nonetheless, um, bringing it back to the Bitcoin conversation, of course, um, you asked ideas of what I could see for a, a bottom for Elrond. Is, is is what the question was? Yeah, unless you already think we're there. Yeah. Well, as coming out of that conversation, like, yeah, man, like, um, at, so the reason that it's tricky to call is because whether it's an uptrend, whether it, we're in a bull market or a bear market, there are always series, plural series of growth or, you know, or decline consolidation and then continuation in one direction or another up or down. So every time there's a, a, a point that things stop price consult excuse me, price consolidates, it's really just like a flip of the coin. Like it's, it really just comes down to what you feel, what everybody feels personally, and then we'll share that. And then some people will be what right and some people will be wrong. But like um, at this point, um, Bitcoin is, is, is looking promising. Even over the past 24 hours, I've been really keeping my eye on it. Um, reason being that it's, I saw it, you know, going down like it had a run to 22K. And at that point, it cooled off and it's been going down. And it's like I get more interested to see if support is going to hold. And uh, at this point, things things are holding. Um, that could change in, in, in a moment, of course, um, either way. Um, but yeah, just bringing it to more of a, a inner like entertaining a bearish thought because yeah like alec is right alec you are right that yeah we can go down and i guess there's just like a thought of like the mental toll more so on what can happen in a a kind of like a capit another capitulation event do you know what i mean yeah i mean are you talking about like panic sell-off and like that kind of mental toll or just like the just the fact that watching your portfolio yeah. look at that red yeah just the the latter that you stated the portfolio seeing the red because it's just like okay how how do we balance any sort of advice and this is podcast elron so we're here to talk and we bring our own opinions and shit um, but at the end of the day it's like well my advice is going to be to buy because i understand i don't understand uh, at, at depth but i understand um, why elrond has a lot of promise and i have expectations for where it will go in the future so at this point trying to put myself in the shoes of somebody with cash ready to put into the market because they're ready to start investing and and make that move towards financial freedom financial independence financial goals retirement whatever it might be um yeah that's a huge emotional toll if if you were to buy right now at 50 dollars, and that's kind of my prediction it's like if we go further down from here gosh i really don't know if there are more people in the I'm getting the hell out of here category or if at this point there are more people on the sidelines waiting and ready for that dip. Um, yeah, so it's it's really challenging because at this point, I think capitulation, any further downside from here to begin with would retest the, I'm looking at the chart now, would definitely retest the lows of about $37. Uh, so $40 is kind of that range that seemed to snap back up above relatively quickly. Um, so anything from 40 to $37, I would say, is is definitely like a solid place to like almost like show that sign and add to the market by that dip just as kind of like a sign to say like I'm here and I'm ready because at that point 
we're dipping at, at, at that point we're really testing those um feelings at those levels so if we go lower than that obviously you're not obvious but save some money don't just ape in next time we get to the lowest part but definitely save some cash because i mean if elrond is kind of capitulating going farther down i assume that's because bitcoin is also seeing some weakness um which i could see going towards like 17 or 18 but man like i really think that if it's not today if it's not next month the bitcoin bottom will develop between generous 16k to 20k like I, i'm more inclined to say like 17 to 19 but i don't want to narrow it too closely because that's just a little bit you know i'm just guessing um so i expect for for their downside 38 to be tested um and from there i mean maybe go down to touch 30. Um, I think anything beyond 30 is, is, is just a really, really excellent buy. Um, and, and yeah, I mean, I, I'm exposed, I'm in, in position for the market, but yeah, like the $30 mark would be a really excellent buying opportunity, I would say. Yeah, I'm gonna definitely agree with you there, Steven. Um, looking at how things uh, looked on the last downturn, yeah, we did hit that $38 support line and bounce right up from there. and. I remember talking 40? about that with the the $38 support Oh, I'm sorry. Line. I'm sorry. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And and bouncing up from there. And um, I, if there is more downside, I do fully expect us to return to that support level. And that's when I'm going to go ahead and buy some more because mm -hmm. I kind of regret not buying more uh, when it hit $38 previously. But I'm also of the expectation that things are going to go back to $38. That's just how I see yeah. it. But if they do, I'm ready. Yeah. Um, you're not going to... I almost thought about unstaking everything and selling my bag at around the uh, when we were back in the 60s because I kind of felt like we were going to yeah. retest the $50 mark. I should have. Uh, too late now. Um, yeah. But I mean, it would. it's okay though. I got some dry powder ready to go and if things go lower after 38, I'm ready then too. But I think a, a thing that we also need to highlight mm -hmm. is there are tools out there to help, you know, deal with downturns and if you get in at the right time these tools can really benefit you things like staking uh things mm -hmm. like yield farming i mean if you're yield farming right now you're earning if you're yield farming locked max that is you're earning uh 60 apr i don't know what the eagled uh mex farm is currently because i haven't been messing with it but even just staking within uh the myr app you're earning um upwards of 13 percent, 14 percent on some staking platforms so that's honestly a big deal that a lot of people overlook when it comes to like times like these mm. i'm still making money every day on my myr app every single oh, day yeah. granted i put it right back into the to the staking pool but at the same time who else is paying me out every day anywhere else mm. you know so i'm hanging on i'm doing what i gotta do and i'm ready for a downturn if one is to approach Hell yeah, man. I like that. That's, that's a great message. And we're back. Hey. That Those are some some great words there, Alec, uh, just talking about m what's available through the decks and just through staking, because those are really just great ways for people who are you know viewed with the long term. And it takes faith, but um, I think just like the message kind of aligning with what we said earlier was having a little bit to do with at what point you got into the market, um, you know, being a little bit weary, wary, I guess, to enter the market right now when it could go lower. Um, if you are in the market already, then, you know, the um, meta staking, meta bonding through lock mex, staking, regular Elrond farming. So and then there's just like play, I guess meta staking is for liquidity providers, too. Uh, but yeah, my Dex is chugging along. Um, how I mean, how do you feel? Do you do you feel like you're making progress? Do you do you look at the numbers of mechs and Elrond that you have, or do you focus on the dollar sign? Uh, I, I, I look at both. It's mm -hmm. kind of like a <laughs> man, man, you know, it's kind of like, yeah. a, Ooh, I have this much Eagle, but Oh fuck. It used to be worth a lot more, yeah. you know, kind of thing. But at the same time, dude said it before, I'll say it again. I'm here for the long term, and the, the team continues to build even in a downturn. So, it's not, it's not like the market is uninteresting right now, you know? Mm -hmm. uh, the team continues to push out stuff, so it's, even though there's a downturn, things don't have to be boring if you don't want them to be, and things don't have to be, I mean, maybe some people are really in the shitter, mm -hmm. but things don't have to be that shitty. Yeah, hopefully people 
sold along the bottom if they were really in trouble like hopefully if you did buy higher and over uh exposed yourself then you did take some money out like hopefully you're not like literally just like in the shitter you know <laughs> like yeah. just fingers crossed like um, i really need a market turnaround like that i would say is not the the way to 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 run this thing i i think there's a term for what that's called but i forget what it is but it's just like when you continue to hold on, even though you know it's going to hurt yourself, it's like, mm. yeah, I, I, it's like a psychology term or something. Yeah, it's like uh, you realize you're past the point of the return, but also at the same time, if you were to sell right now, you get screwed. So mm -hmm. it's just like it's this thing of like, oh fuck it, I'm down. <laughs> I guess might as well just. I guess if I'm gonna sink with the ship, might as well just become a pirate <laughs> or something. Yeah, who lives at the bottom of the sea. <laughs> SpongeBob SquarePants. <laughs> oh my God, episode thirteen is already one for the books. I'd say. <laughs> I just hope you all are doing okay out there, and you know things will turn around again. It's it's just a matter of when. So. Yeah, yeah, but we'll see. I I mean, just while I'm talking to you in front of the peoples, I just gotta encourage you to consider. You know, so. You know, if, if the market dips a little bit more, like, you know, maybe take half of what you're going to buy the first time. So, like, maybe like a quarter of what you have total and buy right now or maybe even half of a quarter. So an eighth. Like, I, my encouragement to you, Alec, is because we're in one of these con consolidation ranges and add another layer of kind of like dry powder to that is just like this effect of herd mentality and just entertain. So yes, I, I, I'm not going to say we're going to do this. I'll go ahead and say, I'll be, I'll join your side and say, yeah, man, like we're definitely going lower. Like we're going lower. Everybody's saying we're going lower. Like that's just what's going to happen. Like we're in it for the long haul. Like it's just going to be rough. It's going to be like a slow moving bottom that kind of gra gradually retests and like dips a little bit low. And those are the dips that I'm really looking to buy is just like once it goes lower and really just is riding that floor those quick dips that people just market sell off like those are the ones that i'll be ready to buy so there's this collection of herd mentality so just entertain entertain this you know that was the 99 percent. entertain the one percent that's like then looking at the 99 percent and, and saying look how everybody is is you know doing the same thing and expecting the same thing like what if they're wrong? Like what if they are wrong? And just consider how quickly the market could move. And, and that is not to say put it all in. That's literally just to say like we are lower than we have been in a while. And adding a little bit here, a, a portion of, of your dry powder, just a portion or even a portion of the portion type mentality. Because if we go up from here, you just at that point, like it's literally the, the competition is back engaged because people realize people kind of wake up to the, the idea oh like i'm trying to buy elrond at lower prices but so literally so is everybody like this isn't a competition right now because so many people are just like literally not playing but there is an underlying competition whether it it heats up warmer or it heats up higher I try to remain ahead of the competition and sometimes that means like doing what the competition might not be doing. So that that's all I'm going to say. I just, you know, you know how I feel, but I got to stick one last more word of just considering to buy a fraction of your dry powder just in case. So you feel that emotional, a little bit emotionally better if it does start to move up. So I don't know. That's how I feel. Capture the average. Yeah, I, I, I can see why you're saying that, dude. And, and I'm glad that you entertain the, the other narrative for just a little bit, too, because you're right. It, it is a big majority narrative, but people could be wrong. We're in one of the most volatile markets that have ever existed. Mm -hmm. Like this is true volatility, this whole market. But you know that it's going to go up and you know that it's going to go up violently. It's all a matter of when is it going to happen? I don't want to be on the wrong side of it. So I'm going to just be careful. But I mean, it's 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 literally only going to be something that I, I, I will eventually probably say, like I told you so, whenever it happens. I think I'll join the bear, the bull camp when it's when it's appropriate. I hope I join it at the right time, and I hope there is no room for an "I told you so." I can already hear you, man. I mean, we're we're the level that we're at right now. You're already you're like, oh, I wish I would have bought lower. Like, price could go, price could 
double in 24 hours or less. I promise you it could. It could, but will it? We'll see. We'll see. And I at that know. point, like, I will have... I will have sympathy and I will try to love you, but I will try not to rub it in as well. <laughs> I'm just I'm just waiting for relief in all the markets as a whole yeah. for me to start feeling good again. And but there is something to say about the way Eagled has been performing compared to other coins. Mm-hmm. It's been doing phenomenal. It's been holding up better than Bitcoin. So that that does say a lot. That does say a lot that people aren't willing to mm-hmm. to panic sell like they are with some of these other coins yeah and that was uh on the last episode we talked about that um time frame of the elrond has seen growth elrond network has seen growth over the past like i guess ever since the exploit and yeah it's um it's definitely showing signs of strength in the midst of all this kind of bearish you know market action for sure uh, but yeah Somebody in the comments said something about the performance, looking at it from the very top versus where we're at. And Elrond has not outperformed Bitcoin uh, from that standpoint, which I just need to say because I was, you know, I, I, it's, it went from 560 down to 500, which is um, uh, like negative 80 percent roughly, um, whereas Bitcoin went to like 60 or 69 and now it's at 20 so yeah i don't i don't mean to like burst the bubbles because yeah bitcoin has technically out uh out, outperformed the market but at the same time for people who started at 550 or people who were involved in the decks you know the argument can certainly be made that there was yield to collect that a hundred percent puts you in better position than it was if you were just owning Bitcoin. Like if I owned my portfolio, I'd have to look at it later, but it seems that I, I'll put it this way. I would much rather be invested in the Elrond ecosystem and collecting yield through all these sort different mechanisms rather than just like buying and holding Bitcoin. Yeah. And speaking of the Elrond ecosystem, I, I think we, we need to get off this, this, bull or bear up or down i think we need to focus yeah, right. on on what what is the team doing to continue to build for this for this for the community mm-hmm. and well definitely not mex economics because we're mm. all waiting on that but, uh, <laughs> shots fired for um, real shots fired yeah. but um we, they released something really cool that i'm kind of excited about too this jungle decks yeah what yeah that's that's pretty dope man and what really gets me thrilled about this Minimum liquidity of 20K. Yeah, yeah. So that's a pretty uh, low level of entry for anyone to create their own fucking token built on one of the fastest, strongest blockchains out there. Yeah, dude. I, it was pretty cool when I saw that drop. It was definitely one of those things that I didn't know if I would ever come to be using it. But what it speaks to giving more decentralization um, in, you know, uh, or just gives more power to decentralization through those pretty low barriers to entry. Like, yeah, like, well, I don't know. I mean, it's just another thing that is just going to kind of take adoption for people to uh, start to use these things. Um, but and then for developers and builders, um, you know, hopefully the tokens that do launch on the decks on jungle decks that is do get some traction because there is like a if you go to the page it like warns you and it kind of puts up these disclaimers like just letting you know that you're interacting with something that's you know pretty low barrier to entry they call it like watch out for crocodiles um but it, it, it's like the same concept of like telling somebody don't buy an nft rug like they're gonna do it and and they're gonna yeah. and they're like it's like if like people are gonna do like whatever it takes to get what they want and if they really want it that bad like they'll be like oh this might be a crocodile but it might be a crocodile that like i'll befriend and then we'll be best friends with this crocodile like i don't know <laughs> Yeah, I wonder how many people are going to get hurt aping into some of these jungle decks tokens. Like, literally, just look at the name, people. It's a mm. fucking jungle out there. Mm-hmm. So do be careful. Holy shit. Clever name. I mean, yeah, rando people. I mean, you got to have 20K, you know. But still, random ass people can jump onto this thing, and it's 
really it's a jungle so yeah. it sounds like they can do whatever they want i have not had the chance to go to jungle.myr.exchange yet but um i definitely need to check it out and see what it looked like have you have you been able to check it out steven i just went to the website and saw that it looked like my art decks but jungle theme so <laughs> that's that's as, really yeah that's as far as i got you know the my art decks is like that electric blue feeling yeah but yeah it's it's some nice lush greens it's literally like a different themed my art decks is is pretty much how hmm. how i put it i'll definitely have to check that out after this man yeah um, but that reminded me, you know, just the con- uh, concept idea, this jungle and what's out there. Um, I've had a lot of people asking me about, about Proteo, the DeFi suite that's going on first uh, brought to my attention by Go Guy Go. Uh-huh. Um, have you seen anything about this? I know um, Twitter isn't, um, uh, you're not on it a whole lot, so maybe you haven't seen it. Uh- I saw you leave a comment on Go Guy Go's uh, oh, yeah, Twitter. Oh yeah, yeah. Something about "Come on, man" or something like that. Yeah, yeah. My my bad, Marcus. Like I, I don't mean anything by it, but I will. I, I've shielded my own bags too. But it was clear that he was implying that the Myar decks. He just said Dex tokens. He was speaking broadly. Um, but you know, we're here for Elrond. We know that. So. It was basically like Max's crop by Proteo is is how I, is how I read it, which is just like not true. So you know, always take what I say with a grain of salt, especially if you're a friend of mine, which I call Marcus. I I think he's just trying to say that. I think we're all still waiting for that. You know, the better tokenomics for Max, yeah. and I think he's just mm-hmm. seeing maybe a little bit of a diamond in the rough here with Proteo, someone who's already got uh, one of these tokens with proper what he sees is proper economics yeah and you're, you're totally right and that uh is a lot of us right now kind of holding mechs waiting for something to happen i've started selling uh, it started small taking little i call them loans from my pile of lock mechs that i had uh because it was just it was just sitting in my art deck just farming and I was always just like scooping off the lock max off the top and just switching it to Elrond. But it was just like truly generate after the swap, after the swap from lock max to, um, to Elrond, my lock max farming lock max was just like yielding so little. And I, I've been struggling to see the value of mechs once again. Did you sell all your mechs again? Uh, no, like 80% of it. <laughs> Holy shit, dude. You keep going back and forth. I know, man. Uh, I, I it's like i really don't know i i know that i've made good trades i'm switching a, a, a pretty much all of it for that one million per elrond met or um, trade. Yeah, yeah that was a nice place but then i got back in and i mean it's 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 tricky because there's a way to liquidate your lock max it's it just doesn't feel like this you know there's no locked component anymore to me like it's it there's a locking schedule out there that it'll eventually come into place but at this rate it's like i don't like the price is so bad like who knows like and it's it's just like the price is the unlocking is thrown so far into the distance it's just like very difficult for me to see it kind of as a a locked asset whenever there is the lock max exchange yeah the lock max exchange definitely uh opened up some doors for Mm -hmm. For quite a bit of liquidity to to be taken away, yeah, it, or be taken away from the decks because I guess liquidity would have been put into people's pockets. Yeah, I guess yeah. If there was no play, oh, man, that, that'd just be such an interesting hypothetical, I guess, or simulation, I guess, to run. Like, how would have all of this changed the lock? Like, would things have changed if Lockmex did not exchange, or the exchange Lockmex exchange did not exist? Well, before I knew LockMex Exchange exists, I was still finding ways to liquidate my LockMex mm-hmm. via NFTs because yeah. I was buying I was buying uh, Elron Apes with LockMex and then reselling it because I was buying low. Mm-hmm. I was buying real low when the floor price was like three eagle, mm. and so I was buying you know with with LockMex and then selling that shit at like eight eagle floor price, yeah. ten eagle floor price, and I was like liquidation, baby. <laughs> Yeah, dude. <laughs> NFTs being able to buy. Uh, I think I bought uh, an, an, a Midas act with some lock mechs 
it was uh, earlier on when I discovered and got into all the Elrond NFTs. And I just had the lock mech there and I was like, well, like, I guess I'll put this to use. Bought some, uh, bought, I guess, just like one NFT. I don't know. It was like weird. It was like, maybe I'll just like do it to see if it actually works. Like, can you actually buy something like with lock mechs? Like, what the hell is lock mechs? It's just like a number on a screen. <laughs> Speaking of NFTs, did you... Uh I saw you bought, I, I think you bought some Zoidsters, didn't mm-hmm. you? I bought some and I minted some. Ooh, that's dope, dude. So um, how, was their, how was their minting process? Was it pretty smooth? Yeah, thankfully it was very smooth. Uh, good, b- good. But I'll go ahead and add here for those watching, uh, if, if you have minted some NFTs on Elrond, uh, you, you understand the process. Uh, Alec, I know that you do. And um, just some pro tips involve just having good internet and going through the Elrond web wallet, ideally through like a desktop computer or a laptop. Uh, when I tried to mint a project like Drifters, I was literally driving through some mountains on my cell phone thinking that that was going to like, you know, beat others competing to mint these NFTs. Um, Because yeah, the Zoidsters, only 1,001 of them uh, are available. And I was able to mint, I I think I minted six. And um, I mean, they sold out in an instant. Like, you know, people were all over online and being like, ah, dang, like I didn't get any. Like I refreshed the page as soon as the time clicked over and I missed it. So it's those competitive mints that you really got to be wired in literally like set yourself up for the most success because it's literally a competition like who can get the smart contract through faster and uh i got i got six of those bad boys i'm really so there was no mint maximum i can't remember uh that's i actually can't remember i think you i think you're right I hope there was because, man, I, I remember like in the past people were like scooping. I mean, just, you know, taking the whole thing for themselves. Yeah. And I really I really hope there was some uh, mint maximums so people were able to to get in on it. But yeah. it's really cool what Zoidpay is doing, man. How, how do you feel about the art? Um, I haven't been able to take a good look myself. Mm-hmm. Are you happy with the, the NFTs you received? Yeah, uh, I'm trying to run through um, the different characters and stuff that I got. Um, and. I like it. I I like the idea of having a a, a more limited selection. Um, But before I kind of run off on on that tangent, yeah, like I feel like there is a lot and maybe it's involved or it's it's related because having a smaller collection, you know, they are technically kind of more rare and more unique, each and every one of them, especially I do think uh, I believe that they were all like hand drawn and everything. Mm -hmm. Um, so I I like them. Like the backgrounds are, are nice. Like I mentioned in the last episode, like they do kind of have this like goofy kind of cartoon element to them. Um, some of them do look a little bit non-human, um, just a little deformed, but yeah, I mean like, I don't know, like I, I feel like they're really kind of like all friendly looking people. Like they all kind of have like a, they seem like they all have a story to tell, honestly. They remind me of Mr. Potato Head. (laughs) Yeah, I feel that. I feel that. Yeah. It's like their arms, they look like you can you can bend them and move them, you know. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I don't know. They, it's a dope project. They I don't I don't want to say that they're cute, but they do see they they're kind of cute like riding in like these these airplanes and like they have their little like parachutes on and stuff. I don't know. They're, they're funny little zoidsters. Um did you uh receive any of the special zoidsters with the uh, I don't know some of them like came with like prizes and stuff Yeah that is a great uh segue there because that's I mean I think Alec if you haven't already you should consider trying to scoop at, at least one because it's a limited selection I know the floor price has moved to uh I think 7 maybe a little bit above yeah. Um, so they're a, a good buy though and right now they're almost like um it's still there's still some mystery surrounding the Zoidsters because the benefits that will get dished out, um, referring to the uh, ten thousand Z pay airdrop, seventy five hundred, three thousand, mm-hmm. and then several of these others are going to get um, fifteen hundred Z pay, and then one lucky winner is going to get a shopping pool. That th- those announcements and the benefits uh, will be announced on the fifteenth. So oh. we're we minted and now we all just have these Zoidsters, but we don't know. Like it's still a random process. It's not. I think they um, what 
kind of tool they're using is there will be a specific, you know, those um, specific airdrops for winning um, holders. But also, too, I think that the specific Zoidsters that have X trait, like um, ones that have like a briefcase, like lawyers or something like if it has this trait, then it yields this benefit. So it's literally going to be kind of a competition of like, oh, like I want to s- grab. They just announced that this uh, NFT, this uh, element of it is going to give me this benefit. So those will mm. inherently like those Zoidsters will grab on higher value. Um, so floor plight. Floor price right now, I'm about 7.2 last time Zoipay tweeted about it a couple days ago. Um, but yeah, only 1,001 of them available, um, and they're going to have a lot to do with the gamification layer. I got to say, they're doing this very intelligently. The way they are making like surprise utility or utility for certain characteristics mm-hmm. is really, I think, going to let people just hang on to these especially right yes. now who's yeah. going to want to let that go when you don't even know if you have one of for sure who knows if yeah the one with the shopping pool could you fucking imagine Holy that moly. like that's incredible dude like they're really putting out straight up utility out there i think there's a lot of nft projects that can learn from them mm-hmm. it, it doesn't only have to be your earning max or eagle every couple of weeks there could be other cool stuff out there and i think uh zoe is doing a really good job of that yeah dude uh, you know and it just I, I I said this time before at least once that it, it literally like the team at Zoipay just like seems like they're just like casual but like they, they're hardworking but casual they mean business and they also like do just have this it feels like a a, a a steady path like in everything that Edward has talked with us on our interview with him and has said in between then it's like they're going to get it done and and they're going to release these things like the Zoidsters and it's it's not going to happen maybe as quickly as you want it because if we live in this world of now 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 as quickly as possible um but next up on their release i i'm i think might be the wand token sale which i've been looking forward to for a little bit um yeah they they continue to bolster a lot of different things, and I haven't done much research into this one token, dude. So, can you tell me why you're why you're excited about it? I I think I'm excited about it. Just, I mean, I don't know if it's it it has something to do probably psychologically with the way they're branding this gamification layer of theirs. Mm. Um, and so it's like, so let me kind of break the, the fourth wall and say that like it's all like the um, vibe behind it is it's kind of like this this alchemist lab and how you can stack these things and I mean how I see it is this kind of like shelf of different chemicals or whatever you want to different potions and you know combining different potions yields a different type of result and that's kind of how each of these elements are of the um, Zoipe ecosystem are going to come together which is why they labeled it this which is also partially why I feel excited about it and because it's like this idea of like oh dang like we got some baking soda and some vinegar we're gonna throw it together and see what happens it's like ooh, like it did something like i want to grab this i want to grab that and um so um they've on the wand token sale website they have some kind of uh things they're teasing uh they've got the wand token sale and it says more details revealed soon um just talking about um the benefits of holding the wand token these um this this lab of alchemy that they talk about um it's just like there's a lot of mystery and kind of, you know, mysticism kind of behind it. Mm. And, uh, I mean, and also to the fact that they just own it, calling it a degen token, like it's, you know, degen degenerative. I'm not sure exactly how far they want the users to take that, but it's just like the fact that the Zoid pay brand is behind it all is, is the biggest plus that I see, you know, people get rugged on random NFTs that have just like, completely no background but literally like zoid pay is well established has a lot of promise and they've got these nfts and now they have this wand token that it does say and with real utility um so they acknowledge that that is something that a dgen token needs to have and like i say like it seems like they're just casually just like checking the right boxes and it just it makes me feel good and excited not to mention, dude, they got a dope CEO behind the scenes, too. Uh, we, As you guys know, if you haven't seen it already, we had a chance to speak to Edward uh, himself. And, uh, I mean, we seem to get along pretty great. And he seems like a really good guy that has his shit together and he knows what he wants out of this project. So 
I think Edward and his team are really putting in the work, and mm-hmm. it, it's really cool to see them continue to build and build and build. It looks like they're also taking some uh, hints from the or just some pointers from the Board Eight Yacht Club mm. because I know Board Eight Yacht Club also had these potions that you were able to buy, and some of them were selling for like a hundred thousand dollars U.S. dollars. These fucking potions for people to transform their ape. So this huh. is definitely like they're taking some some pointers from them and and going down that route because. I mean, there's something to say about like being able to like take a potion and your NFT just you don't know what you're gonna get. Yeah, and that's the exciting part. You know what I mean? It's, so it's very cool. Feels like a game, huh? Yeah, yeah, and they they got it going on, and I'm very excited to see what they do with their one website, with their gamification, all of it, man. They keep building, Edward. Keep building, team. You guys are you guys are kicking ass out there. Uh, okay, back to it. Last thing I wanted to say about Proteo is that I don't know anything about it. I've seen some really impressive uh, um, growth in the price. I see a lot of people online shilling it. Online, I see Proteo's website list the team without links to like LinkedIn or like learn more about who these people are. And also, these are just things that I see just face value. The partners that they have are just some like random NFT projects. Like mm. people are really talking up Proteo, but there's when I see gains like the ones that they've had during this bear market, like I'm 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 just very skeptical. So if if Proteo ever kind of like gives me good or I guess better reason to really check it out, like I'll get there. Um, but for now, I'm just gonna. I'm I'm in kind of longevity and right now I'm just settling into the decks and I'm just okay with where we're at. I'm not going to make any jumps to Proteo whenever it's up like three, four, five X. So I'm just chilling on that realm. I didn't even know it was up. I didn't even know the price for Proteo was out yet. I thought it was one of those coins that you just buy off a lottery, you know, and you just get a certain amount and the price doesn't get revealed until later. But that's really interesting that you say that. Yeah, just at least wanted to end that so people can stop telling me to, to buy it. Like they literally post a picture of the chart that says it's up like 300% and just like, that's, are you, you're advertising for me to buy the top. Yeah, that's <laughs> that's more of a reason not to buy it right there. Yeah. There. yeah. Anyway, just that's how I feel. Like no offense to any of the team. If you're doing great stuff over there, like forget me. Like I'm literally nobody. Just keep on pushing on. And if what you're building over there is good, people will use it. And you never know, maybe I'll find my way over there. But for right now, we're staying focused on what we know, man. Are you excited mm-hmm. about this uh, Cantina Royale um, project? I know we talked about it last time. We actually talked about it a good amount. But uh, mm-hmm. have you been part? Well, shit, never mind. You can't participate. Um, yeah, still still a little waiting. Yeah, there is quite a bit of waiting. Uh, but I'm excited to see just just what it's about, man. I, I really hope it's a cool game that is able to rake in a lot of people. And mm-hmm. I hope it's one of those uh, um, launch pad projects that, that really boosts the, the ecosystem. But I'm not as excited of, about this launch pad project as I was about Holoride. But even then, I'm not excited about Holoride anymore. So yeah (laughs) it's crazy what the price falling can do to i guess just sentiment overall but yeah i'm looking forward to cantina finding its home cantina royale finding its home on elrond uh looks like swaps won't be enabled for um, it looks like two more weeks on Mm. july 21st so just kind of hanging out for now um but i think the fact that they're you know this will give the Elrond uh, ecosystem kind of like enough going on on the side um, while everything else t- continues to push. Uh, I think that it's it's great to have Cantina Royale. Uh, I recently learned, and I guess I need to do more looking into the background, um, but it does seem that Cantina Royale is venture capitalist funded. Oh. Um, so like it's kind of like a VC type category project, which some people like, some people don't like. Um, but yeah, that, that was something that I learned recently. Um, and uh, I don't know, what is there anything that comes to your mind about VC type stuff? Uh, no, I just I just know VC stuff is usually unavailable to the broad public, so it's it's just always like a veil of darkness over VC type mm. stuff. But it's kind of cool at the same time that the end of, like people within the Elrond community are I don't know if they're getting the same deal that the VC people would have been getting, you know. But we're still yeah, getting in on the ground not. ground floor, which you know is pretty dope. For sure, for sure. 
Um, so yeah, that'll kind of be taking place over the next, um, from the 14th to the 21st. Uh, Bennyman has also been tweeting about this as well, talking about NFT mystery box lottery tickets. Um, have you seen any of those tweets? No, I'm, I'm looking at it right now on this, uh, this thing that you sent me, but that mm-hmm. is brand new to me and I have no idea what the hell that would even mean. Yeah, when I learned that this was like a VC thing, um, it was in that in a similar conversation, or it was the same conversation. Um, I think it was people just replying, talking about it, and somebody was like, yeah, like I got a whitelist for one of these things, but like I don't even know how to like use it. Like I don't, I, I, I don't, because we're US and we don't have the whole Maiar launch pad access, maybe it, that's because of, or maybe it's for that reason I'm not diving into it as much. But it seems from my perspective, from my very kind of distant perspective, that there is a little bit of like confusion or like a little bit of um, a a lack of genuity um, from the team, uh, Cantina Royale. So like that's a little bit interesting because so many other projects that have launched on Elrond and have are using Elrond all seem to be really well well interconnected. Um, but I don't know that that gives me a reason to go online and try to find the people building Cantina Royale, see if they've got an online presence. Really, what just interests me is gameplay. You know, like I'm always mm. interested in graphics and stuff because, mm. you know, I think about. I think about big games like Call of Duty and stuff and the amount of work and the amount of time and money that must be put into just developing a fucking game. And yeah. and then you look at the Elrond ecosystem and how many people interact with this ecosystem and the fact that someone's releasing a video game just for the Elrond ecosystem. I'm, I'm interested to see what kind of graphics we're going to get out of this. Now mm-hmm. I know computers have come a long ways and the things that you can do at home have definitely changed like i mean people can build a game right from the computer at home so it's i'm very interested to see what kind of graphics are we talking about just an overview of an entire field and it's like a strategy game yeah my first person and my third person like uh how's the world look what kind of texture does a rock have you know like things like that i just i'm yeah. really interested to see what how much hard work they put into this project Mm. Would you consider yourself a gamer, Alec? Fuck no, dude. I mean, <laughs> I, I've tried. I have, tr- like, when I was a teen, you know, gaming was, like, becoming big, or it was big, and I was like, you know, I'm going to try to be a gamer. And then I tried sitting in front of a TV all day and gaming, and mm. that was the, one of the most miserable experiences of my entire life. <laughs> Nice. I, the reason I asked was just because you named so many elements. I, I it, it, it seemed like you were a gamer the way you take note of those things, but that says something more about your attention to detail, suppose. Yeah, I'm more into, wow, you were able to create that on a computer. You know, like mm. all, all these Blender things that people post on Instagram all the time, that shit blows my <laughs> mind, bro. And I'm just, yeah. I think it's so cool the, what someone is able to create on a computer and how real or just how how different you you were able to make that look than anything else yeah dude that's definitely something that a lot of um um, i guess dao managers or whatever their position title is technically people running nft projects um which of course are offering these video games talk about how expensive how just costly it is from time and money perspective to build a game so the fact that cantina roy al is building or is using elrond through and through and it's already done like it's it's already to go is is my understanding how quickly the game will start i i need to dive into that more um but uh you know just when i see this timeline it's like we're not we're not ready to play quite yet so i'll learn whenever it's time to learn yeah and and there are a couple of other cool games that have already been built uh Mm -hmm. i I think my cart is available right now question my my ario like how do you say it because it's my r and I, I think they tried to play off of that. So is it Myaro? Myaro? Myaro My- Carp? Myaro. 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 Is there, is there an O at the end? <laughs> I think so. I, I do. I think last episode I called it Myar Card, and then you corrected me that it is because you were trying to pronounce it. And I was like, wait, yeah, like it is Myaro. Myaro. I don't know. We'd have to look. I'm pretty sure there's an O at the end. Hopefully they can get away with that copyright wise. Um, I'm sure yeah. they can. Why not? But uh, 
They're, they are uh, implementing some NFTs within that game, I believe. I believe Elrond Apes yeah, yeah. partnered with them. And you just got to think about the, the logistics of all that. Look at yeah. an Elrond Ape right now. It's only here up right, 3D right. art. That mm-hmm. means they had to create everything here down. You know what yeah. I mean? I've thought about that at least once with a lot of these PFP... Um, uh, nfts it's like okay whenever this is in the metaverse like is there just going to be like a black box on the underside like they they literally have to build the the rest of, <laughs> <laughs> they have to build the rest of the body yeah dude and that seems like quite the project to undergo because yeah. i i've tried messing with blender myself <laughs> and holy shit that is like a whole new language like everything mm-hmm. you got to learn on there and it's one thing building 1,000, 10,000 plus unique characters, but it's another thing to create the body and have them move in mm-hmm. a digital world. Like that's, yeah. that's something else entirely. The phrase that comes to mind is next level. Yes, it is definitely next level. And hats off to you folks who are doing it out there. Um, that's dope as shit. I'm excited to see the gameplay uh, proceed. Um, the my my RO cart, my R cart. I'll probably just call it since my RO is funky to say. Um, that that um, brings up a, a topic that we still need to discuss. We planned on interviewing lots of different NFT mm, artists mm-hmm. and, and creators. We did that poll to see who was interested in being interviewed. Um, so. I just want to address that we've I've genuinely been busy. We've genuinely been busy and um, busy. It, Alec and I are on not separate sides of the United States, but we're in different time zones by two. So sometimes getting Alec and I's schedule is difficult enough. So truthfully, like it's just been a busy first half of the year for both Alec and I. We have not forgotten about the interviews and everything that we want to do with that. Um, but sometimes the creators we reach out and, and it's not even 100% certain what they want, what they're looking for. Um, Zoid Pay was kind of different i mean they reached out to us mm-hmm. we we proposed at times that worked and they were they, they were just like yep yeah, we're there like they literally catered to us so alec and i have our shit going on and if if it's what can i say make it easy on us but i don't want to be like we're like this big brand that you have to like <laughs> get us or whatever it's just it's just it's just nature i guess yeah we are busy guys and there we go. I, I will <laughs> I will I will speak for myself when I say this first seven months of this year have been absolutely wild and I swear to God I haven't had one weekend to relax. So mm-hmm. we we definitely are busy and we want to do these things with you guys and like yeah. Steven said, I mean the easier you can make it on us, the more likely we can do it with you. So yeah. just throwing that out there. Yeah, and what is there to lose? Like all of these projects have already that their projects are already out there it's not like there's this timeline of oh we want to get the video out before the mint so the way i see it is we will get to them and when we do it's like okay then we'll have even better clarity on you know more to talk about now that this hype has kind of gone away i think that this you know there's the beginning stages of a project and then there's the long term and i think a lot of people really do want to see all right this middle game are we in stalemate are we going backwards is progress being made so at some point in the later half of this year beginning today i mean who knows how quickly things could come together um but yeah i'm 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 really excited to talk to these creators and hear about what they've been doing as, as um, you know, that competition has kind of w- went on now, probably close to two months ago. So haven't forgot about all of you out there. Um, but yeah, it's, it's a lot to juggle and, uh, you know, keep on building out there so that whenever we do talk, you can literally just put your, you know, stamp of approval on everything that you're doing and we can all get excited about it. And I think there are actually a couple of pro- – there is a project out there that we should probably cover right now. It's because it's important, and it's Together for Victor. And yeah, that's one, dude, of, that's for one sure. of those projects that I've been seeing float around on Twitter quite a bit. And it's it's for an 11-month-old kid, and I, I believe the I – I don't know all the full details, but this kid is suffering from spinal muscular – and atrophy and it's gonna it's gonna limit the way he can move and are you able to speak on this a little bit more steven 
No, I mean, yeah, I've seen a, a whole lot of it online on, on Twitter. Um, the hashtag together for Victor has been floating around, to say the very least, people putting it in their names, putting in their banners. Um, and Pitt Panther, I think he photoshopped um, one of his um, little Super Victor NFTs into his board ape. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And um, I, I love the idea of it. And I need to get in touch with Drifters because I want to keep my, I, I think I want to keep my Drifters PFP just for the the branding effect but at the same time like who cares like i want to put the the word out there that we can all help towards the money that's being raised for victor um it's pretty devastating the overall cost they're expecting will be in between 2.1 and 2.5 million considering all of the therapy all of the um different elements added into bringing victor a a to to healing from this sma yeah that spinal muscular uh emetrophy yeah however you say it um so yeah it's it's crazy that something like that could happen to just such a little boy with you know so much promise but um i truly believe in in this together for victor thing whether it helps him um all the way to 2.1 or just gets them closer like i really do believe in this movement and it says something a lot about just the love that's shared um in the world but obviously is being shared in the elrond community yeah it's i think this is one of those like truly important projects that are on the community and i didn't really know much much about it um but but diving into it a little bit more, I see why it's important. This is just yeah. a kid, guys. Like this kid is suffering from something he didn't ask for, and it's really cool that the Elrond community. There's a lot of people banding together, and I, I think per one person we didn't mention is High Res the rapper. Uh, mm-hmm. He recently changed his PFP to one of these Super Victors, and I think they're about ready to do a lottery ticket sale where 50% of the funds raised will go to victor and then 50 percent of those funds will be split between 10 people i have a good feeling they're about to raise a shitload of money and so for those 10 people it's going to be a good chunk of change that's coming your way so this is if you're not a winner who cares the fact is that you're helping save a kid's life or not save i don't know if it's a matter of saving his life but allowing him to live a more what we would call you know normal life yeah yeah i i see what you mean and i want to stray away from that normal word too because life is crazy and crazy is normal um so whether whatever happens with victor like even like he's going to be an inspiration like no matter what in the world happens he's already an inspiration at 11 months old and uh, he's literally inspired a global movement it's it's not on the front page of the new york times yet which if you think about it like literally what if the world literally was able to band together and you know it, not to say that it's all for marketing but like that would be really incredible to learn and this isn't going to go over way this isn't going to go away overnight so if or when something significant happens with victor it's it's going to be updated along the way and um by just uh, contributing 0.35 elrond is the minting price um you know it's less than 20 dollars right now um, we can all do our share and, and uh, put some money toward what I would uh, say is a very good cause hell yeah dude that's that's really exciting to see the community going towards this more philan- philanthropic um, way of doing things and it just shows that this is a strong fucking community out here man and yeah. it's it's truly awesome to to just be two part two of the creators that are also a part of this community dude so just yeah fucking awesome yeah, and that's what something I've said and just in comments before is just like there really does seem to be something different about Elrond, whether it's the team, whether it's the community, just the whole vibe, the whole feeling reminds me of a startup that I was involved in when I was still in high school. And very simply, the the owners there talked about how important it is for if they want they their workers to give their customers a smile and, and do it and, and be happy to help then you know that worker obviously needs to be given care attention and the, the worker needs to be happy where they are um, so i think that the fact that we are seeing this what i kind of call like just good fruit and these this positive feeling like this good growth um you know being exhibited in this way 
call it what you want, but I think that that points back to just everything that's being made. And, and I think um, even from a corporate standpoint, you know, the, um, you know, the CEO, his mentality will filter down to the lowest of workers. Um, so the fact that we're here banding together, showing this love, I think says something about the team, of course, and then of course, Benny Min. So thank you to the community and for Elrond starting this movement, which is, yeah, really excellent, awesome to be a part of. I think it's great that you brought up Benjamin because that, that leaves us a great segue to, I believe he did what he did today. Um, I, I've been busy all day, but I, I think he spoke today at the Uchain FinTech Festival, yeah. um, along with some big names, Visa, mm-hmm. Google. Mm-hmm. Um, I do want to throw out there though, uh, maybe this is me being, you know, U.S. centric, but this was not a United States event. This was a European yeah. event. That doesn't make it any less significant. I'm just mm-hmm. saying the market exposure right. was not as big. Yeah, it, you know, I, I threw around the Unchained Festival banner with Visa and Google Cloud right next to Elrond, and it's cool, but you're exactly right you know we need to see you know this now i sound like a elrond bear <laughs> but it's like <laughs> yeah like we we do need to see it would be great to see i'll say it like that it would be really great to see something being geared thrown at the united states um i think that it will come um i think that we just need to be patient i guess is all that i'm left to say uh because yeah the fact that at least if Elrond is is finding status in in the EU and beyond, then you know Visa and Google obviously run in the United States too. It's like Elrond will join that kind of like nebulous, and then eventually the particles will land in the United States just by what's referred to as this network effect. So I believe in it. It would have been great to see something, and it's it would be good to see some stuff geared at the U.S. Um, but I guess it just means like, hey, like it's it's not there yet. You know, the market is in a bear market, so um, time and and patience and keeping each other happy and motivated along the way, right? Yeah, they. <laughs> I, I think the team just needs to continue to build. Like I've said in the past, you know, continue yeah. make those fucking waves, man. Mm-hmm. And people are going to see the waves all the way over here in the United States eventually. So, For yeah, sure. keep it up, team. I think it's awesome that you guys were at this Unchained Festival with some of these huge fucking names. But, yeah, we're ready. The U.S. market, we're ready over here, man. I know it's a weird time to to get out and start branching out into other markets and other territories. But, man, I'm, I'm excited for the day I start to see and hear people talk about Elrond in the United States. And that's when mm. I know we had made it. Hell, yeah. It is crazy. Like, um, there have been just a handful of times over the years that I've heard people just, you know, at a coffee shop or something like that, talking about crypto. But it's it's weird how it really does seem to be more commonplace now than ever before, and to the degree that sometimes, like, if it's not super convenient, I won't even like say anything to anybody. Because like before, like if I heard somebody talk about crypto, I was like, yo, like, why are you talking about this? Like, I talk about this stuff, but like, I know nobody else does. Like, what are you doing talking about it? But now it's just like, all right, I just heard somebody casually telling their, like some friends of theirs, oh, this is what my husband does. And I'm just like, all right, like I want to, I'm really curious what you do in with crypto, but I guess on to the next one. Yeah, dude, I, I'm right there with you, man. I hear those conversations out and out happening out in public. And like, mm. I get this like weird excitement in me, like, I'm involved, I'm involved, you know? <laughs> yeah. And I'm like, Alec, chill the fuck out. I, I think you need to understand not many people are as involved as you and Steven are. So, yeah. or it's nor- like, yeah, I do that thing, me. <laughs> yeah. And it's like, I get so excited about it. But at the same time, I, I, I understand that the vast majority of the public doesn't even understand crypto at all. Mm. So mm-hmm. that's why I just try to keep myself out of those conversations. Yeah. The go. Yeah. A lot of them tend to go to a place where people like to share when, like, you know, if we're in a bear market, people will brag about when they sold. And if we're in a bull market, people brag about when they bought. And it seems like that's the conversation I'm, I'm just not particularly interested in. And it's, if you're talking about crypto, it seems like odds are it's going to be a matter of, ooh, I made this a good investment. Like I made money off yep. of this. Um, and clearly you and I are 
uh, you know, we're, we have a lot of interest in going in a lot of different directions, uh, but I think that it is fair to say that you and I are a little bit more invested and, in, you know, given our, our podcast, um, you know, we, we got to be um, checking out the, the deeper end of this spectrum. Yeah, and I, I think you and I also see the bigger picture of what all this means for the world as a whole. It's not mm-hmm. just an investment. It's changing the fundamentals of how we interact with money. Mm-hmm. That's a yeah. big fucking deal. I mean, central banks have had their have had a hold on on this economy for such a long time. I think it's I really think this this right here I know it's not here yet, but this mm-hmm. really is how things are going to change with fast, immediate, low fee payments. And that's mm-hmm. That's what it's all about in decentralized. That's like the number one main thing, man. Everyone's yeah. sick of being jerked around by by these central banks and 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 these central market makers. And it's time for for things to just spread out and truly become a global economy. Yeah, and uh, along the lines of that, um, I'm not sure when or what we talked about at some point, um, but there is a, a conversation where we could take what you sp- said and speak further, not so much into the metaverse and not so much into like playing games, um, but still that idea of decentralization and, and owning your data mm-hmm. in the in this Web3 world. Um, and then, of course, um, there are other kind of like bridges not to um, show more love at, Z, uh, at ZPay, ZoidPay, um, but um, because there's also new verbiage coming out of the Holleride community of this autoverse. Um, I don't know if you've seen that. Mm. Um, they've sort of thrown that around. It wasn't around at the very beginning, I don't think. But now it's not the metaverse for Holleride. Like they're kind of coining it like the autoverse, mm. I believe. Um, and then Zoidpay has their hyper mall as well, which is their mall in the metaverse that I, I assume will have a spot to go to the bank um, that you know they have in real life, the real brick and mortar bank that they've acquired. Um, so the hyper mall, they've been making um, partnerships all over the place. And then Ethium, uh, relevant to the conversation of owning data, um, Ethium and Zoidpay have recently partnered together for to have these um, whatever uh, Ethium is touting that that whole idea of the um the nft the the way that you know the avatar terminal. or something like that. yes your, your yeah. digital avatar thank yeah. you um that's going to be integrated into the zoid pay hyper mall um so the web is definitely growing it's 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 some of the tracks are getting run over more and more and it's kind of getting firmed up you know and then there are new connections being made um but altogether yeah i think that we are staring at I mean, just like the next change of the world, this we are staring at a revolution by definition of the word, and uh, yeah, I don't want to like bring it around to a conversation of buy it because it's good value. Rather, just like I don't know, at least take a moment to think about how some of these things, what what real impact some of these things could have if they ever in a million years were to take hold, and um, it's going to be very exciting to watch everything take place um but also too i think that it will bring a lot of people financial independence freedom people will you know oh shit i'll end that real quick um people will come to see the value of owning these kind of digital real estate assets and i think it's really going to change the world sorry guys cameras died but yeah totally (laughs) totally agree (laughs) with you steven uh we are on the cusp of some world changing things man Mm -hmm. and it's it's just so cool to be here at the ground seat of it all. I mean, it could be 10 years from now. could be five years from now. could be tomorrow. You don't know. <laughs> but um, it's, it's cool because you and I both have this sentiment. It is going to change the world. Mm-hmm. And so I'm very excited for when it like the whole world realizes that it has changed the world. And I, I, I will be there for that day. Yeah, it's going to be just crazy to see how the dominoes fall and um, there's been some unrest in places like sri lanka and it, it's in the history and it's in the precedent of bitcoin um to be a, a hedge or rather just a safe place for people um whenever there is turmoil in the country and i think that something in america 
we haven't you know we're not a, a third world country which I'm very thankful for that um but in a future world who's to say where the united states could go and um i think that it, it could take some of these uh, third world countries and um, just places other than the united states showing that bitcoin or cryptocurrency can be used for people to become more familiar with it um, and more comfortable with the idea yeah i really hope god i hope i really hope the united states never enters a time in its history where we are relying on peer-to-peer -peer payments via bitcoin um, mm -hmm. because our economic system has failed us but if it does come to that point you know it's kind of nice to know that there are systems out there that allow us to still trade value back and forth but mm -hmm. then you get into doomsday scenarios and is there yeah any internet? is there any electricity does it even fucking matter you know what i mean so yeah, it's kind of funny. Somebody, a buddy of mine recently asked me what I thought about precious metals. And initially I was just like, well, like, I'm not interested in them because I think Bitcoin is a better option speaking broadly in terms of crypto. But then they literally, they didn't, just the question got me thinking. It's like, well, yeah, like, I guess in a world with no internet, I guess the one um, the one per, kind of like solid uh, diversification tool for crypto is probably gold um, because in a world where the internet collapses that physical gold has decades not, not <laughs> decades tens of decades of precedent that has established it as a store of wealth and value so yeah. i'll be honest like part of me is is just the other day i was looking at some some retailers to see um if if um, buying gold coins in in the uh, local areas is, is something to do just an idea, but uh, yeah, it plays to that conversation of a world where there is no internet. Yeah, and you just look back at human history, and we've been trading shiny things for the longest fucking time. <laughs> I mean, really, we're, we are no different from fish because we are attracted to those shiny objects, you know, and like, <laughs> it's like, how long have, been, have people been adorning their body with gold, trading gold as yeah. currency, using precious metals that have been minted? Mm -hmm. You know, minting true. is not a minting Truly is not mint. a new term. Yes, a true mint. You can you can find coins that are over a thousand years. Of, I I don't know, but coins <laughs> that are really really old that have been you know, well, I don't know why I'm doing quotations because it's a real fucking mint that were minted <laughs> back in the day. You yeah. know, so yeah, I mean, hopefully we never. God, I really enjoy the internet and I really like this new global economy stuff and I hope we don't knock ourselves back to the stone age and have to start a little over again yeah well we can't start going down that route because mm. i think there's just a whole different podcast channel that probably covers thoughts of existentialism global yeah. crisis. <laughs> but um I, you know it's it is something to consider because uh, the way i view podcast elrond it were, kind of falls back to why i got an elrond to in the first place and it was just all about finding a median medium of of saving of storing money um that gets one be closer to financial independence helps people get closer to their financial goals um you know so it, it works uh, in the long term um to um see kind of competitive returns against some other uh, methods um, but at the end of the day it is really just kind of like a let's look out for each other and be honest that yeah like if the internet dies like that is uh, a blind side that crypto would definitely become pointless so i guess at that point the internet doesn't exist but if it did exist i guess this podcast would turn into just like podcast gold buy gold <laughs> well if if the internet was to die then i don't think paper money would have that much uh value either so i think it's really right the, so that's why gold yeah yeah true <laughs> it, 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 or guns gold and guns <laughs> Jeez, yeah the, the two g's you need in life there's another uh, yeah. one there's at least another letter you need in life but it doesn't start with g and i'll just leave that to everybody's imagination let your imaginations run wild with that well, what if we started talking about water uh -huh. token? Because water is a thing that you need in your life. Um, now, are you talking about like the ESDT water or real yeah. water? The wa the water token is all just a weird thing to me that I continue to see Seaver pump. Yeah, you know, does, is does he it, still doing? Is he still pumping it? Yeah, he does that every once in a while. Also, does water have an actual price? Is there a price associated with it? I'm not sure. 
I I minted the little pirate ships, whatever that they had out there. Um, I I don't know that did kind of that was strange how Seaver. I guess it is strange how he talks about it and kind of yeah he pumps it a little bit because I don't know if but I mean I guess that does help with the case. It's not like he's trying to pump a bag. It it it's it's it doesn't have any value. So he's just yeah. strangely excited about it, and I'm strangely <laughs> enticed. It's like what is this something or is this just like a bit of a meme like what's going on i just stopped you know paying attention to it i know there's like sometimes you have ways to get more water and i'm like do i actually give a shit or am i missing out on free money right now <laughs> yeah yeah i it takes a lot for me if if uh, if there's a mint or anything like that that requires you to go to discord like i'm not interested like i spend uh, enough time on twitter dude I had to like delete Discord from my phone because the, oh, really? like, the moment you join a community, you are just rocked with notifications. Mm-hmm. I mean, to the point where you have a hard time turning off notifications because you continue to get notifications. Yeah. every I, When I had Discord on my computer, it would automatically start up and not- notifications turned on every time like you restart your computer. So yeah, I ended up just like deleting it because finding the place to turn off notifications is even a bit buried in the discord settings like i feel like i've had to install it a couple three times just for some specific reason i'm just like dude get discord off of my computer like i'm there's something about it that i'm just not about yeah i i I just think water is just another one of those community builders though i think uh yeah you're probably uh, right yeah another community building tool but it's one i am not too interested in uh, but you keep it up, Seaver. You keep pushing yeah, that for water. Sure. I mean, I'm sure there are people who have so much more water than I do. I think I was like airdropped 10,000 water mm-hmm. at some point, I'm pretty sure. But I'm just going to hang on to that. Maybe it'll be worth a dollar one day. Ooh, hey. 10, 000, I mean, that'd be fucking sick. $10,000 for free. <laughs> that would be crazy. That's something that nobody saw coming. But uh, swinging it back to that comment you made a little bit ago about just the importance of building, I at least wanted to talk about the, I don't know, did you catch the um, live Twitter spaces? Bennyman did. I'm talking about the Elrond Builders uh, Dev Hub. I did not have a chance. Um, Was that his own space or was he joined by someone? He was uh, joined by somebody from the Dev Guild. Um, Forgive me, I forgot um, the guy's name. Um, But yeah, Bennyman went on Twitter Spaces. It was the uh, the fellow guy from the the Dev Guild. Um, But yeah, they just talked for about an hour and then they answered some questions from the community. Uh, Did you have a chance to participate in it? Yeah, I I did listen. Um, It was... It happened the same day that the public mint for Zoidsters happened. Mm. So I was up uh, before the sun that day and just kind of kept on cooking through the day. Um, I'm going to be honest. It was one of the things I had more so on in the background. Mm -hmm. Um, and, And that was just because I'm not a developer, which isn't so much an excuse, but more so it's just like, well, like, um, I'm not sure how somebody like me can really kind of use uh, the, the dev hub because the name it leads me to believe that it's for developers to learn, whereas my exper- or my expertise, what I want to contribute is much more kind of customer facing per se, like yeah. what these things are on Elrond and, and how, how to use them, just kind of like step-by-step tutorials and, and kind of high-level insight rather than I'm a developer and I'm a part of this dev hub explaining builders how to build it's like i have no business telling a dev how to develop (laughs) respectfully uh throughout your listening did anything interesting come up or was it mainly just a background thing the whole time yeah i mean it i should have taken some notes um because there were a few highlights along the way um but something that always kind of um i'm reminded of is the statement along the lines of you don't necessarily remember the words that people say but you remember the impression that they leave you know the the feeling that they give you um so um, for what it's worth i i was felt I, i did leave that twitter spaces feeling empowered um really just along the lines of what you were referring to like the team is still building and uh this dev hub is going to get at that underlying 
I won't call it an issue, um, but that underlying opportunity for developers to come and build on Elrond so that if you are a developer, if you are a builder and you hear about Elrond, it's like, okay, like I want to use this. I want to build on it, but I don't like, it's going to take me a lot of time to do all this digging myself. So we always talk about onboarding uh, participants or like users of Elrond, but I think that it's easy to forget that users include builders and adoption co needs to uh, be stretched towards the developers arguably more than it needs to stretch to, you know, these customers or these users of the, the Maillard decks or otherwise. Dude, 100%. That makes total sense because without the builders, what is the product? Yeah. And if I remember correctly, I've I've like uh, looked at what code they use, and I'm pretty sure it's uh, a code that is widely used within mm -hmm. developer community. So it's also they did something smart there by allowing, you know, it it's an easy entry for for yeah. people who are developers. I'm not saying oh you can go learn developing tomorrow, but for, <laughs> for an individual who's a developer. I think it's a little bit more of an easy entry because it's yeah. more of a um, a common computer code that's that's uh, written out there. For sure, man. Um, I totally agree with that because part of me reads some of what's online about Elrond, and they do make it seem as though like just hop online and watch a tutorial and you're an Elrond developer, start building. And it's like, it's not like a shame at them. It's just like, damn, like I really do wish developing was as easy as that because I mean, that's what the internet or that's why the internet became so enticing is because it's this tool for people to build on and if you know how to build i mean you can build empires like i don't have to run through the list of empires that have been made corporations that have used the internet and uh, built these webs of communication and things getting done and so forth like i said a lot lot has been accomplished through developers yeah, it's in, it's truly incredible what lines of code can freaking do to our world. Um, so one final thing, um, something to be on the lookout, uh, Benny Min, um, we've talked about him a little bit, um, but there's an Ask Me Anything um, going on pretty soon, Thursday, to, so tomorrow, um, the uh, Eagle Community Twitter page, which I think think is the morning stars um kind of like page yeah. for the elrond yeah. community yeah so they're hosting they're having benny men on for an ask me anything um so this episode won't drop for a couple days but by this time um the uh contents of the the ask me anything will be published online yeah man i'm sure that's gonna be pretty cool and i'm sure there's gonna be tons of questions about next economics oh so, my gosh uh, yes yeah so i'm <laughs> excited to check out that ask me anything and have you seen the eagle community website it's a beautiful fucking website man yeah if there's something these guys know how to do it's to create great ux and ui i mm -hmm. mean just look at the myr app everything is so easy to interact with and i love the eagle community website it's something really cool that they did there and i believe it's kind of like a hub for things that might be happening in different Things, all, all things Elrond, but you are able to see the hub of everything that happened right on that Eagle community webpage. Yeah, I've ventured over there a couple times um, and uh, we'll see. Uh, there's like a community page that, I mean, it would be cool to get featured on at, on my Twitter page. Um, <laughs> so we'll see if that ever happens. But if not, like I'm, I'm totally OK with that. I'm, I'm obviously over here still grinding on Twitter. Um, but yeah, I'm uh, I'm very sure that I don't, it'll be it would be comical to see the questions for the AMA and literally just they're all about mechs. A lot of people are curious about mechs these days. Yeah, so I hope we're able to get some answers tomorrow. Um, hopefully, mechs economics update soon. But um, we stay strong. Mm -hmm. We continue to push forward. And man, just excited to be here in the community. Yeah, that I, I'm I'm just stuck in the downtrend with mechs, and I I. I respectfully think that the Mex 2.0 uh, is a bit of a blowing smoke. I think that it potentially will be underwhelming because Mex is in bootstrapping. Like it really hasn't had, where it's still in the first year. So I have very, very, very low expectations, especially now that it's been so many weeks since it's been teased. It really just, it, it seems like, I mean, please like prove me wrong team, but it seems like eventually after everybody's forgotten about the Mex 2.0, it's going to come out and it's not going to be big news. Like it will be maybe a little bit, hopefully, but 
I'll be honest, man. I think that it really depends on the sentiment of the market and whether or not we can start to move up and out of this range. Because if there are still people in the community and, and that this herd mentality is expecting just this low chug along the ground floor, yeah, I mean, it's it's going to have an impact on on how this news is received once it comes. Yeah, truly, time will only tell on this one. And the community is sitting on the edge of their seats waiting for a word. So we're all excited for when that word comes out. And if it is underwhelming, well, fuck me. <laughs> <laughs> it is what it is. Yeah, exactly, Steven. Yeah. Um, on that note, dude, I think we've had an awesome conversation. Is there anything else you want to add? I don't think so. I, I'll see you in, in about two weeks here. And obviously, we'll talk in between that. Hopefully, we'll, we'll see some progress on price so that everybody can start to feel a little bit of relief, start to see a little bit of green in their, their bloody portfolios. Um, but yeah, man, really enjoy the conversation today. Yeah, same here, man. Well, um, on that note, dude, it's been a fucking awesome episode, man. And uh, thank you to the community, as always, yeah, for, for the sure. support. Um, we'll catch you next time. We will catch you next time. Lucky number 14 coming up next, everybody. We'll catch you then. Woo! Hell yeah! Peace Bam. out.